can have it with custard or cream, but I think it's really great to be able to have crumble and cake in the same dessert. Hi, my name's Becca and I'm a chef here at the Waitrose Cookery School. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a great autumnal dessert, apple crumble cake. So for our apple cinnamon crumble cake, we're gonna start off by making the crumble topping. So to do that, I've got some plain flour and into this, I'm gonna add in some cold cubed butter. Your butter does need to be cold, otherwise you're gonna end up with basically just like a squidgy mess in your bowl. Pop it into the flour and then we're gonna rub it together to make our crumble. I like to start by just tossing all the butter in the flour so you get it nice and coated. Maybe just splitting them up if any of the cubes have stuck together. This is actually a really fun activity to do with kids. They can get involved, you can split the bowl in half and share it with them and it's a really nice easy thing to do but comes out really delicious. Once you've coated all the cubes of butter in flour, I like to take a cube of butter and then squish it between my thumb and my finger so it's nice and flat and let it back down into the bowl to get coated in more flour. This way I find it just keeps the butter colder for longer and it comes out a much better crumble mix. If you wanna try and make this at home, then the link to the recipe is in the description below. So today I'm making my crumble mixture from scratch. If you had pre-made crumble mixture though, you could definitely use that instead. Once all the cubes of butter are flattened and they're coated in the flour, next up we're gonna rub it between our fingers. And at this point, it's nice if you let it fall back into the bowl as well, just from a little bit of a height. It's getting a bit of air into the mixture. It's gonna make it really nice and light. So when you're making a crumble, you just wanna make sure the mixture stays between your fingers and not the palms of your hands. The palms of your hands are much warmer than the fingers, so the butter can melt a lot quicker. If you've got any big lumps left over, you can just shake your hands off, give the bowl a shake, and all the big lumps will come to the top of the bowl, and you can work those in. A couple of big lumps is absolutely fine, but ideally you want it like frying breadcrumbs all over. Next up, we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients here and just mix them through. So I've got a teaspoon of cinnamon, Got some chopped hazelnuts. If you didn't want to use hazelnuts or any kind of nut, you could use oats instead. That would still give you a really nice sort of different texture in your crumble mixture. And some sugar. Once you've got all your ingredients in there, you're just going to use your hands again to just mix them all through nice and evenly. I've used demerara sugar in my crumble topping today. Gives it sort of more crispy, sugary bite and also um, sort of caramel flavours in your crumble topping, which is really nice, but you could absolutely use white sugar if you've got that or any other kind of sugar would do the job for sure. And that is our crumble mixture ready to go on top of our cake. We're gonna keep this in the fridge just to keep that butter nice and cold until we're ready to put it on top of our cake. The next stage for our apple crumble cake is to make the cake batter, which is gonna go on the bottom of the tin. So we're gonna start by creaming together the butter and the sugar and the vanilla. So I've got my butter in the bowl already and it's at room temperature. If your butter is too cold, it's really difficult to cream together with the sugar and you're not gonna get a really nice smooth finish. I'm gonna add in my sugar to the butter and I'm also gonna add in my vanilla bean paste. So it's one teaspoon of vanilla bean paste in here. I love vanilla bean paste. I actually use it in most of my baking. What is great about it is it's basically like a vanilla bean pod, but all concentrated into one tiny jar. So it lasts for quite a long time because it's such a strong flavor. You can absolutely use vanilla extract as well if that's what you've got. It'll still taste really delicious. So I'm gonna use my electric ham mixer to cream my butter and sugar together. You can absolutely do this with a wooden spoon if you don't have an electric mixer, that's fine. So we're looking for them to go really nice and smooth and light in colour. So when you're using your electric ham whisk, you just want to move it around the bowl, bringing all of the ingredients in from the outside into the middle. Just keep moving as you go and you're going to end up with a really nice smooth mixture. It's kind of a bit lighter in colour than we started off with, which is great. That means that we've incorporated lots of air into our butter and sugar. And it's going to make for a really nice light sponge in the bottom of our cake. So we're gonna carry on with the rest of our mixture now. So I've got some plain flour here, which I'm gonna add some baking powder into. And then we've got two eggs and some milk, which we're gonna combine together 
and add into the butter and sugar as well. We're using milk in our cake batter today, which is gonna help to make our cake really nice and light, have a really nice sponge at the end. So I haven't sieved my flour today. You absolutely can do if you want to. If you do sieve it, you're adding in extra air into your cake batter, which is gonna make it really nice and light and fluffy, but it's not gonna make that much difference. Okay, so I'm gonna add in a bit of my milk and eggs now as well and start whisking this together and then keep going with the flour, the milk and the eggs until it's all combined. My cake batter is all completely combined now. All the flour, the eggs and the milk is in combined together with the butter and the sugar and it's ready to go. One last thing I'm gonna do before I use this batter is add in the zest of my lemon. So we're gonna use the lemon juice a little bit later on with the apples. So I thought it'd be nice to add the zest into the batter now to minimize waste and use the whole lemon. So I'm using an unwaxed lemon today. Don't forget to scrape the back of your microplane down as the zest always gets stuck on the back there. Okay, so all that's left to do is to fold my lemon zest through the mixture and get it into the tin. So we've got really nice thick batter here. You don't want it too runny, but you don't want it too solid either. You need to be able to spread it out the base of the tin. I think it looks great. I love the smell of cake batter, especially vanilla cake batter. I just think it's so great. Okay, this is ready to go into the tin now. So before we put the batter into the tin, just make sure it's lined. Um, you wanna get it lined all the way up the sides as well so that your cake doesn't stick at all when it's in the oven. So we've lined it with um, parchment paper or baking paper just to make sure it doesn't stick. So I'm gonna tip my batter straight into the tin now. We just wanna spread the cake batter out evenly in the base of the tin and then it's gonna be really nice and flat for our apples to sit on top. Okay, I'm happy with that. I've just popped it to one side whilst I prepare my apples. So I've already sliced up a couple of my apples ready to go. I've put them into a bowl with the juice of that lemon that we zested earlier and a little bit of water. This is a great way to keep your apples in some acidulated water, just to keep them from going brown and it keeps them fresher for longer until you're ready to build your cake. So I'm just gonna do one more. We wanna take the core out of our apple. So I'm gonna cut my apple in half and then make a V shape in the center to take out the core. Be really careful with your knife and also don't make the V too deep in the middle of the apple. Otherwise your slices will fall apart a little bit later on when you come to slice them. So now we've taken the core out of the apple, we're just gonna slice them up into thin slices. You can use the ends as well. No need to waste any of the apple here. You wanna make your slices a reasonable size, not too thin, otherwise they're gonna basically just completely disappear into the cake. You can use any type of apple for this, completely up to you. Just use whatever you've got in your fruit bowl or maybe your favorite type of apple. Everybody always has their favorite type of apple, even if they say they don't, they do. Okay, so we're ready to layer up our cake now. We've got all the different elements and we're gonna pop the apple slices on top of the batter. I think I'm gonna do three rows of apple. Different apples will be different sizes though, so just get them onto the cake however you think is right for your cake. So if you have got any apples left over, Helen did a fantastic apple tart recipe. If you want the link to that, it's just in the top right hand corner. Click on it and try your hand at another apple dessert. So with some of my leftover apple pieces, I'm just sort of filling in the gaps that I can see that I've missed as I've gone. Just lift up the apples and slot another piece of apple in there. I've lined up all my apples nicely on top of my cake. I've got a couple left here, which I am gonna use as a snack. A little treat for me for baking. The crumble topping has been in the fridge whilst we've been preparing the other parts of the cake. So it's nice and cold now, and it's gonna be a really great crumbly topping for our cake. So just lift up the bowl and tip your crumble topping onto the cake, and then we can spread it out and get it into the oven. This might look like a lot of crumble mixture, but it has filled the tin perfectly. And in my opinion, the more the better with crumble. So I'm gonna bake my cake at 180 degrees for about one hour. I'm gonna probably check it after about 45 to 50 minutes just to check it's not burning. 
Okay, so the cake is fully cooked now. It's really nice and golden brown and it looks fantastic. I'm gonna leave it to cool on the wire rack for about 10 to 15 minutes just so that it's cooler to the touch and then you can take the cake out of the tin and cut it up and enjoy it. Okay, so I think it's ready to taste. I'm going to go for a bit that's a bit of edge and a bit of middle. It looks really nice. That sponge looks so nice and fluffy. And then enjoy. The sponge is absolutely delicious. So nice and soft. And then you've got the really nice apples in the middle. And then I really like the crunch of the nuts and the crumble on the top. I think it's a great cake. Definitely one to share with your friends and family. So let us know in the comments how you like your apple crumble cake. Do you like it with cream? Do you like it with custard? Or do you like it with both and a bit of ice cream on top too? Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video and recipe, we've got many, many more. So just subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for the notifications when new recipes come out.